In animation, I'm not sure if that was follow through or overlapping action. Anyway, welcome back to the channel. I had a viewer ask a question about Blender Grease Pencil's erase tool. So in this video, I thought I would talk about the settings for it and discuss some options to kind of make it work better for you. If you have any questions or comments you would like addressed, please leave those below and hopefully I can respond to those and possibly make a video about them. Hope you found this video helpful. If so, please like and subscribe and let's get started. So here I'm in Blender 3.6.1 and I'm going to click on 2D animation to create a 2D animation layout. First thing I'm going to do is draw some strokes, but before I do that, I'm going to turn off pin pressure on radius, pin pressure on strength. And that's these two buttons up here look like targets. And one thing to note when you're dealing with the strength of the pin, that if you have pin pressure on strength, you're going to get some opacity. And if you're trying to just draw straight black lines, you don't want that. So I'm going to turn the strength all the way up to one and then turn off pin pressure. So now I'm going to draw a line and how you draw the line is important as to how the race tool works. So if I draw this line kind of wavy like that, and you can see if I go to stroke, I've got post processing selected. So now if I go to edit mode, go to vertex mode, select it, you can see my vertexes are kind of sporadic. So where there's a flat spot, there's not a lot of vertices there. And then like a curve, I have a lot. And that's because Blender is trying to create the line you drew with the least amount of points possible. And that is a performance thing. So if you have a very complex grease pencil scene, you know, you could have some performance issues with your computer, depending on your computer and how powerful it is. And so the least amount of points you have in the scene, the better the performance. Now, this creates a problem for the erase tool and I'll explain why in a second. So let me go back to draw mode. Under stroke, I'm going to turn off post processing. So that's this one. Then we'll draw another line. I'll try to get similar to this one, which I didn't. So now I'm going to go back to edit mode and we'll highlight both of these. Now you can see how many points there are in the non post processing line. So again, you're getting a lot of points with that, uh, even though you're kind of getting a similar line. So we'll go back to draw mode. Now with those two examples available, I'm going to go to the erase tool and go over its settings a bit. So if I click on this little icon here at the top next to the erase soft name, you can see I have four erase options. So for now I'm going to click on F eraser hard. And then like the draw tool, we have some options up here. So the radius is 30 at the moment. You can also increase that with your bracket buttons. You can also hit F, just click F and then you can drag to increase or decrease the radius and just click to finalize that. Next to that is a pin pressure button, just like for the draw tool. Next to that is a button called Occlude Eraser, which erases only strokes visible and not occluded. I don't really use that. Next to that is a pin button, which pins this eraser as the eraser when you use the fast switch key. I don't really use that either. So next to that is how the eraser works. So these erasers here are just kind of the same, except they have different settings enabled as their default, but you can change these if you need to without changing the eraser. You can just pick a different setting. So next to that is the strength. And again, that controls how much the eraser fades and how much it doesn't your line work. And you can turn on and off pin pressure there. And here you can adjust it even further to affect the stroke strength or affect the stroke thickness. And this is just turning on and off the display. If you don't want to see that cursor, which I leave mine on because I want to see how big the radius is. So now with hard eraser selected, let me, click on the line without post process and you can see how smooth that erases. Now, if I click on and erase the line that used post processing, which has fewer vertices, it's not going to erase quite as smooth. Let me undo that. You can watch how it jumps right here because there are vertices further apart. See how quickly that changed. And you're not going to get a smooth erase on that until you get to the next point. So you did it again there. So the one with a lot more vertices erases much smoother. 
So you watch when I get to this flat section how much this is going to jump. See? It immediately just started erasing that whole line. So you're kind of trading performance for how well the eraser works if you use post-processing. And I can't really tell you which is right because again, if you have a very complex grease pencil scene, fewer points could make a difference in performance. So I'm gonna undo these changes and I'll go over the other erasers. So if I click on erase points, this is gonna erase from one vertices to the next. And you're really gonna see a jump in the second line when I do that. So here's the line without post-processing. You can see it erases pretty smooth. Now this one's gonna jump quite a bit, see? So again, if you're just trying to be very meticulous with your erasing, the non-post-processing line is gonna be the best. So that's how the points work. The next one is soft, is very similar to the first one. It will give you more gradient. You will have to erase more because it's leaving more behind if that's the look you're going for. This one's gonna jump the same as the other one. Not as bad as the hard, but if I get down here, you can see it starts erasing more outside of my radius. And the last one is eraser stroke, and this just erases the whole stroke. So from a post-processing, non-post-processing standpoint, it doesn't really matter much. It is just there to erase the entire stroke. And that's kind of your options for the erase tool. Now one issue I've ran into is, let me draw another line, and I don't have post-processing on. Then I want to use the cutter tool instead of the erase tool. Now they both work pretty well there, but you'll see if I scroll in, because I have more points in this one, it can get closer to erasing that. Now I still have a little bump here and I can probably cut that off. Obviously with a little bit of effort. If I do this one, it leaves a much larger bump because it has fewer vertices to cut from. You can still clean it up. That's just something to keep in mind. And the last thing I want to mention as far as cleaning up this information, you can always use the edit tool. So if I highlight this, I can just hit delete points. Delete points. So that is one way to clean this up. You could also say delete these points and see that didn't have a vertices anywhere near it. So that was a problem. You could click delete those points. I could go to sculpt mode, get grab tool and bring that in and clean that up. But again, that's pretty tedious. So the best option I have found is to use no post-processing on my lines, which will include the most vertices. And then the erase tool works pretty good. I still don't think it's as great as some other programs, uh, especially like Toon Boom Harmony or Krita or Photoshop. But working with vectors like this, um, I mean, you're going to have some compromises to make. So that's just a quick overview of the race tool. Hopefully you found this helpful. If so, please like and subscribe. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And if I can answer them quickly, I'll leave a comment with that information. Or if it's something I can demonstrate in a video, I'll be happy to make that for you. So again, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.